In my last video I claimed that the Macca's run was Australia's greatest motorsport, but for the first time in my life, I was wrong. There's one motorsport that knocks Macca's runs off the throne, and that is paddock bashing. Paddock bashing is number one in my list of top five Australian motorsports, but what makes paddock bashing the best of the best? Well this is why paddock bashing is the best motorsport in the entire world. Paddock bashing has to be the most exhilarating motorsport to ever be invented. Where else can you watch a Mitsubishi Magna hit an anthill at 120 k's an hour and get sent into orbit? I like to think of paddock bashing as more of an art form. There's nothing more majestic than seeing a $500 car with no roof go sideways at 120 k's an hour and take out a tree. So without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. The first reason that makes paddock bashing the best motorsport in the world is cost. It's no secret that in 2023, motorsports are an expensive hobby. As you can see here, an F1 car can cost between 12 and 15 million dollars, while a mint condition paddock basher will only set you back 12 to 1500 dollars. On top of the race car, another part of motorsport that costs a lot of money is transport. Unless you have balls of steel and want to drive to the racetrack and cop a defect, you'll have to use a trailer. But after you fork out thousands for a car trailer, you're going to have to fork out thousands more for a car that's capable of towing that trailer. On top of these costs, you're also going to have to pay for petrol and tyres, plus track entry fees. But when it comes to paddock bashing, none of these fees are even involved. There's no need for a tow car or tow trailer when the Mitsubishi bag that you bought for 1,200 bucks off Facebook Marketplace comes with six months rego. And instead of forking out big money for E85 or other racing fuels, all you need to do is head down to BP and put in some cheap 91 octane. Okay, well maybe 91's not that cheap anymore, but at least it's still cheaper than 98. And the final piece of the puzzle being track fees are also obsolete. All you need to do is find an old farmer with a muddy paddock Buy him a slab or two of his favourite beer, and there you go, that's your racetrack for the day. But if for some reason you can't find a farmer who's willing to rent out his paddock, there are many other viable options. Some of the best include the local cricket ground, the local school oval, your neighbour's backyard, your neighbour's front yard, or anywhere else you can find with an empty grass pitch and no fence to keep out cars. Another cost involved with motorsport is maintenance. I mentioned tyres before, which is already an expensive thing to maintain, but if you blow an engine, gearbox, diff, or stack a $300,000 race car, you're in a bit of trouble. But due to the fact that most of the time a paddock basher will cost you less than a full tank, you can send it into a tree, wall, ditch, lake, house, swimming pool or to the heavens it's and if you ride it off you can just buy another one. Another thing that gets in the way of a good day at the racetrack are the rules and safety. Things such as scrutineering and safety inspections get in the way of all the fun. Things such as roll cages, fire extinguishers, airbags, roofs, windscreens and doors are all unnecessary and just add weight and ruin performance. And that's what sets paddock bashing apart from other motorsports. In paddock bashing, none of these unnecessary things are needed. Another annoying regulation that gets in the way of having fun during motorsports is power and weight. In the F1 and V8 supercars, there are very strict rules on how much your car can weigh and how much power it can make. Which means you can't just strip the car bare, slap in a big turbo, pump it full of nitrous and hope for the best. Whereas in paddock bashing, not only is this perfectly legal, it's actually encouraged. In paddock bashing, there's nothing wrong with getting a Mitsubishi Magna, completely stripping it out, removing all windows, filling the washer bottles with nitrous and rerouting it into the intake, and welding on a big fuck off turbo. The lack of rules in paddock bashing give racers the option to customise their vehicle however they want. Whether it's for looks or power, you get a sort of freedom that you'd never get in other motorsports. One of the best things about paddock bashing are the cars involved. Some of the best cars for paddock bashing are some big names you might have heard on my channel before. Cars such as the AU Falcon, Mitsubishi Magna, 
Tongan Taxi, Hyundai XL, Mazda 121, Holden Commodore, and Toyota Hilux, just to name a few. These cars are some of the best cars ever made, and they're perfect for paddock bashing. Some of these cars may be cheap and crap by today's standards. Well, not the AU of course, but back in the day, these cars were performance machines. The beautiful looks of the Hyundai XL may fool you. You may be thinking that most of these cars spend their time in a museum or an art gallery, but here in Australia, we actually have a Hyundai XL racing series. If that doesn't prove that the Hyundai XL was born to be a race car, then I don't know what will. As I briefly mentioned before, there are no restrictions on the cars in paddock bashing. Of course, this lack of restrictions also applies to modifications. Some of my favourite mods you can do on a paddock basher include roof deletes, rear end deletes on a front wheel drive, turbo conversion, supercharger conversion, engine removal, fully sick paint jobs, door deletes, and driver deletes. The list of possible modifications for paddock bashing is endless. And because of no safety restrictions or rules, if you can do it to the car, it's completely legal. The best thing about a paddock bash vehicle is unless you hit a tree, the car is reusable and you can take it on a Macca's run. Another advantage that paddock bashing has over other motorsports is spectator experience. In most big motorsports such as the F1, NASCAR and V8 supercars, the spectators are stuck behind a big fence. Whereas in paddock bashing, spectators are allowed as close to the car as they want. It's the closest thing you can get to Group B Rally in 2023. Another annoying thing about other motorsports is alcohol consumption. Most motorsports, aside from the V8 supercars, don't let you bring in your own alcohol, and they expect you to pay ridiculous prices for watered down shit. Whereas in paddock bashing, not only is there no limit on alcohol consumption, most of the drivers are drinking as well. And thanks to full bladders, an onboard fire extinguisher is unnecessary. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share if you'd like to hear more teachings from the prophet of your account.